believe the over 65s are this country's biggest untapped resource. There are 10 million of them living in the UK with a complete lifetime of expertise and skills that I just think we're missing out on. Because you suddenly feel you're completely on the scrap heap. With 5 million saying their main companion is their telly and 30% feeling they serve no purpose to society, I think it's time to put their skills and experience back into the marketplace. Go, guys! <laughs> Oh my God, fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to carry out an experiment. I'm going to set up a pop-up employment agency. Do you use Twitter, Shirley? I've just got used to electricity. To find jobs that will take our pensioners out of retirement. No, I die on the job. <laughs> yeah, I know what dirty old job you're thinking of. Give them the confidence to get back to work in the future. It gives you encouragement motivated <laughs> and give us all the benefit of their expertise and know-how i haven't passed my cell by day by any means yeah! i'm looking to recruit builders to barmen gardeners to gym instructors and carpenters to hairstylists i can't resist um, a challenge it's an opportunity for them to prove that they can still make a contribution for excellence we strive I've got three months to turn some of the feistiest people I've ever met. You're too mouthy. You're too bossy. There's no humour in this at all. Into a disciplined... Can you not get your ears syringed before the day? Organised... Well, that's a smashing start, isn't it? No, there's no pressure whatsoever, darling. And professional... <laughs> ...outfit. Get the hell out of here! I'm confident that my experiment will be the catalyst that my retirees need to find themselves new jobs. I feel like I'm a teenager. It's true. It will be a chance to prove to everyone once and for all... I'm out of my box now. I don't want to be put back in. ..that the last thing you should ever do is write them off. Never underestimate the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll all be better off as a result. Because I run my own business, I get to decide when I retire. But what about the millions just left on the scrap heap before they're ready to stop working? My plan is to harness the knowledge that these people have gained, help them to turn this expertise back into a living, and give the rest of us access to a hugely qualified workforce. Who better to run my pop-up employment agency than a team of retired office workers with half a millennium of experience between them? Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> She's on the phone already. I like that. Hi there. Running the team is retired recruitment agency exec Jill. I'm Mary. How are you doing? I'm good. If we want to work, we should be allowed to work. We have a wealth of experience. Why should we be assigned to the scrap heap? On her team is former city worker Mo. Hi, lovely to meet you. Who retired ten years ago to care for her mother. Just knowing even if you only get one placement, you've done something. That will give me great joy. And ex-university bookkeeper Shirley. Shirley Valentine. Now you're having a laugh. Who was made redundant eight years ago. I've really enjoyed coming back to work. It's an excuse to get washed and dressed every day and put a bit of makeup on and be, you know, back in the world of living. So, guys, when we're ringing up, we've really got to think about how we're going to get our first big jobs, yeah? Yeah. We got a great response to our ad seeking skilled pensioners from retired chefs and caterers. As the UK hospitality market is currently worth £80 billion, I think it's the perfect first job for our agency. We want catering jobs. Think about possible party planners, event planners, you know, there's a lot of them around and really try and target those guys. Any other ideas anybody's had? I'll write these up. PR departments. PR agencies? Yes. Yeah. London PR companies that are doing events. What about what? the modelling agencies? Well done. That's a really good one. Let's get to work. Let's yeah. get to work. You know, if someone was keen enough, they would work full time. 
I'm all right. And, and you obviously use outside caterers. A little bit nervous at first, lack of confidence after all those years, but settled down and absolutely love it now. It's a great opportunity for you um, as well as for us. Retired sales exec Maggie thinks the agency needs a killer tagline. You want energetic and enthusiastic? Well, I think energy is important because mm. you don't want people pegging out with all the jobs done. <laughs> I think physically fit might be better. How about if we die, we won't charge you? <laughs> Sorry, okay, should we just add that? If we die on the job, we won't charge you. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. I think there's yeah. something really great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not long before an army of retired caterers are banging on our door. <laughs> We've got head chefs, silver service waiters and cocktail bar managers. Between them, they have enough professional experience to pull off even the most challenging event. First in is Dawn. Hello, Dawn. Hi, Mary. Really pleased to meet you. Dawn is a veteran of the catering industry, having become one of the first licensed pub landladies in the UK. You ran your own pub and with a restaurant for 20 years. I just like cooking. I like being part of a team. If we can make somebody enjoy the food that they're eating at the other end, that's great. What do you like cooking? Curries. Oh, My curries go down well. I've still got my recipes that I used to use in the pub. Hi, I'm Hello. Mary. Very nice to meet you. And you too. That's then it's Margarita, the former owner of a pub and a deli. I found myself owning a delicatessen and um, doing catering. And we ran it very successfully, uh, with blinds out the door at lunchtime. Next up is Celine. He worked his way up to become head of the American bar at the Savoy and won several industry awards. I won the prestigious prize of Barman of the Year in 1992. Well, the competition was open all over Britain for all barmen to take part. You read people's mind what kind of cocktails they like. They what like about me, then? Gear. What about me? Can well, you read uh, what spirit I would I like? I think you're like a Key Royale lady, isn't it? I am a Key Royale. <laughs> I am totally a Key Royale. Oh, really? Two years ago, Salim retired after a career that spanned 11 prime ministers. For me, working behind the American bar, it was like on a stage and people watching you and you had to perform well to the best of your ability, otherwise you're a failure. My life has changed dramatically. Now, I have all the time in the world in his final weeks at the hotel, Salim was moved out from behind the bar to make way for his younger replacement. Eric, he succeeded me as a head barman. Then I started going behind the bar, it was a bit different for me. That was my life. It's totally different now. Maybe that's why I miss it. I miss the job there. If I said to a company that wanted to put on an event, we can deliver you the barman at the, at the Savoy, they'd jump at you working there. Wouldn't they? It doesn't matter what your age is, does yeah, it? I would love to, yes. Would you love to? I'd love to, yes. It's not just great skills and service that will really set us apart from the competition. We can also offer an abundance of character. Hello, you. Yes, she is. And my next potential recruit has it in spades. I've got a question to ask you. OK. Now, you've looked at me as a person. I am looking at you as a as person. my size. What size, dress size are you? Yes. 14. <laughs> Pardon me for laughing. 14 to... I'm a size 18. Why don't people know that? Phyllis learned to cook during the war, and despite no formal training, she's had a lifetime to perfect her home cooking skills. Phyllis Morgan, 91 years of age. My God! And a half. I feel so much younger sitting here. Why should I moan or feel, oh, my God, I've hit 50? Brilliant. Inspirational. Really lovely meeting Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Pleasure to you. You look great. For each of my caterers, this is their first step back into the workplace. It'd be good to see if I can just pick up where I left off, whether it comes back to you like riding a bike. Any kind of drinks, cocktails, wines, whatever you say, I'm ready for it. And I think I'm qualified. Good care. It's an 
a tragedy that these talented, brilliant people have been put on the scrap heap when they still have so much to offer. I'd love to get them a job. My pop-up agency is aiming to take pensioners out of retirement and get them back into the workplace, where the rest of us can benefit from their skills and experience. If I said to a company, we can deliver you the barman at the, at the Savoy, they'd jump at you working there. So far, I've recruited a crack team of caterers, but the agency's doors are open to all areas of expertise. And today, Jill and the team are meeting retired hairdresser Paul. Oh, hi, guys. I understand you're the, the hairdresser to the stars. Well, I don't know about that, but I've, um, I've seen a few stars in my life. Hello, girls. I'm all up for kisses. Yeah, you're getting them, mate. Don't you worry about that. Come to me. You're Paul, are you? Yes, I am. I'm Margaret. Margaret. Hairdressing has been Paul's life, but having struggled with retirement, he's now keen to get back into work. Paul trained at Vidal Sassoon before becoming Harrod's in-house artistic director. He competed for Britain in three world championships and finally won the highest accolade in the industry, the L'Oreal Colour Trophy. And you've got a good haircut. That is a really good haircut. Yeah. Do, you, um, do you bend that with anything to get Nothing. it going back? So it's, it's got a natural gel, way to it. A bit of gel. A bit of gel, yeah. And the rest is me. <laughs> All that going back to the salon every five minutes, don't... Well, except for you, my darling, but... But then your, your style needs that. Your you style needs that. You can't take me out of the 60s. Really? <laughs> By the 1980s, Paul was at the height of his career. It's just a love job. It's not work. It's just you're inventing things, you're making people feel better about themselves. As an award-winning hairdresser, Paul drew his inspiration from youth culture. The ideas of hair come from the street, which is young people anyway. That gets interpreted into what you do in a salon. And so, yeah, young people do keep you young-minded. I didn't realise how important it was to me until I got a bit older. But by then, Paul had retired. Retirement was harder, doing nothing. I do miss that buzz. Now 65 years old, Paul can only watch the next generation of hairstylists from the sidelines. The hair industry has changed dramatically. Young people, they are often going and see what they're doing and just cast my eye over it and think, yeah, that's good. That type of creativity, I don't do anymore and I do miss that. Hugely talented and only 65 years old, we need to get Paul's skills back into the workplace. Paul, can I ask you who does your hair or who did your hair? Mwah. So if I, if I came to your shop, I wouldn't end up looking like that, would I? You're too pretty. Well, Paul, it's been fantastic. Fab, mate, it's been great. Meeting you. I would like to have individual jobs. I would, you know, give them a price and see what they say. We've got a strong team of experienced caterers who are ready to return to work. So I've had the agency working hard to find an event for them to cater for. Becky, have I got the team for you? Yes, absolutely. And first to bring in a lead is Maggie, who's lined us up to pitch for the catering at a Great Gatsby-themed summer party. They want to start with canapes, mm -hmm. then they'll have a bar barbecue to and then they'll drink on. Right. I've chosen ex-barman Salim and former city worker Mo to deliver the pitch and win the business. This is the first time they've come across this bunch of OAPs who are saying we're the ones who are going to cater to you and they've got to sell that in. You know, we don't want any charity here. It's not going to be charity. We've got to deliver. And that means a professional pitch. I'm hoping they'll be confident enough to sell their wealth of skills and experience. Mixing a drink and serving it without eye contact is nothing. It's true. I keep it's telling true. young bartenders, don't spend too much time on your cocktail. Spend much time how you're talking to people. It is so true, Celine. If you put personality into it, you'll forgive anyone, yes. anything. So we're going to deliver you the best drink, but we're going to deliver you the best service because it's about people enjoying themselves and making sure we're really connecting. That's really powerful. I'd buy into that. Yeah. I would buy into that. Mo's role will be to present the menu to the client, but despite a successful career in the city, 10 years of retirement has taken its toll. Now, I'm retired, 
I lack confidence in certain situations. I hate it when there's a room full of people. I will back off. Um, we'd like to... Don't worry, do We've brought a menu today um, that I'd like to read out to you. From the grill, we've got the Gatsby Burger, and it's served with garnish, spicy mayonnaise, and a seeded brioche. You can't beat that because it is beautiful. Good. See, so tell them that you love it. We love it. We're excited by oh, it. Oh, I am. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. So tell them that, don't you? Just I hope you do. We are really excited by it, you know? I think you two are going to do fabulously. Fabulously. To help them feel the part for the pitch... Sorry, I didn't tell you about this bit. <laughs> I've arranged a great Gatsby-themed surprise. Oh, that's divine. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, how lovely! <laughs> After a quick costume change, it's off to meet the clients at their head office. Other catering companies have been competing for the job, so I'm hoping that Salim and Mo show what sets them apart. The team doing this event for us need to be completely on the ball. Um, it's going to be fast-paced, it needs to run like clockwork. Every element of the event has to be absolutely perfect. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Becky. Hello, Hello Becky, I'm Maureen. Hi, nice to meet you. If they say no, I'd, we're right back to the drawing board, really. I mean, you know, we certainly won't give up, but it'll be a real knock. I'll just brief you on the menu. I'll read it out to you. It's okay. superb. Um, we've obviously gone on the Gatsby theme. Yeah. Um, from the grill, Fitzgerald's ribs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's served with a tangy barbecue sauce. Lovely. Millionaire's champagne sorbet. Wow. I know, it's mouth <laughs> Sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's now Salim's opportunity to wow his audience. This is Salim. Hello. Hi. The job of the head barman of the Subway Hotel was to create cocktails, recipes for every <gasps> occasion. Yeah. I came up with a recipe for you. I use cube sugar, saturated with Angostura bitter, leveled with cognac, Top it up with champagne slowly, mm -hmm. with a twist orange S as a garnish. The taste leaves memory. Oh, sounds perfect. It's passionate, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the champagne classic. It all sounds really good, and we would, we'd like you guys to. Oh, that's really kind. To, Thank to you. take it on. I feel so excited <laughs> that uh, I'm not retired anymore. Oh. <laughs> Mo and Salim have done it. We're in business. I'm utterly delighted. There's a nice bubble of success in me. Yes! No, no drinks here. I relish doing cocktail parties. We're going to give it everything. I'm going to enjoy myself. And people are going to enjoy themselves also. There is a week until the Great Gatsby party, and today our full catering team are meeting for the first time. Today, they're going to really be honing their skills, but more importantly, every day is about making them feel needed, motivated and inspired. Who says that needs to stop when you retire? Ready for work? They'll need to serve perfect canapes throughout the night, starting with the Gatsby Mini Burger. I've asked catering expert Tom McCormick to put them through their paces. We're going to do a mini burger, but you have to follow the dish spec to make the burger. Let's go. My caterers may be rusty, but between them, they have hundreds of years of expertise to bring to the table. We don't want them Kitchen. cooked. Okay. We don't want them brown. What does that do? Well, they keep much longer. Do they? Mm. We, we used to smash and pull out the core. It's just great being able to prepare something that, you know, hopefully it's going to be enjoyed. As this is mass catering, Tom wants to test every individual chef's ability to follow his dish spec to the tea. The onions you put in, were they cold enough? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The result should be a dozen identical burgers. Oh, get your mouth around that. It might be a bit difficult. He's worried his dish spec might be ignored. Read your dish spec. Follow the dish spec. Read the dish spec. Follow the dish spec. The importance of 
the dish spec. Just a little bit of that wouldn't have all of that. It'd be about to be a bit too spicy. I've got high hopes for Grace, who ran her own catering company for 18 years. But using a dish spec is a career first. I find it very difficult to follow a recipe because I've never followed a recipe in my life. Now 68 and retired, Grace feels she has little purpose in life. And like two million other over 65s, she's been diagnosed with depression. About coming today, I was nervous. I didn't want to come. And my sister to force me to go. She says, come on, Grace, you have to go. Rub. No, no, don't pat. Don't pat. <laughs> Stop patting. If I weren't here, I would just be sleeping and watching television. But I'm glad I came. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Now put it down there. What this is doing is saying, are you feeling your world's closing in when it doesn't need to? Because if that is the way you're feeling, you can come and join. You're welcome. All we want you to do is to feel motivated, inspired, to do the job and have a great bit of fun doing it. One of my chefs has found today hard going. Where will we find the link? But at 91, Phyllis's determination to work shows the kind of character that sets my caterers apart. Now, how chunky do you think we should do it? I think Keep that's going. nice. Keep you think going. more? You're doing very nicely. Having never worked in a professional kitchen, Phyllis is finding some of the equipment unfamiliar. What I'd like you to do is to go to the fridge and take out your burger. We've got to have a cloth. Why do we need a cloth? You don't take things out of an oven. This isn't an oven, it's a fridge. You know, yeah, we've been cooking. Oh, they, this is resting, isn't it? Because, well, I wonder where the bloody things were, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Never mind, Mary, you'll remember me forever. That'll be something. Okay. I'll go Come down in now. posterity. Phyllis is determined to work, no matter what life throws at her. On Wednesday, yeah. before I came here to you, yeah. I went to the doctor yeah. and he said it's facial cancer. Now, Phyllis had to come here to you after being told that. So if that isn't a person of strong personality, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. I'll show you where to do it. No, I haven't met many people like Phyllis, but there's part of me would love to think that I might grow into a Phyllis one day, you know? She's just actually remarkable. Today was just as much about giving them all belief in themselves as well as what they could deliver on a plate. They look good. Yes. What was the best bit? Working together and yeah. presenting it and making the decisions together. Fantastic. It's really good. And your shape is excellent. Oh, look at your little display in the middle. But whilst it's great to see their skills coming back to life, I'd say there was still plenty of room for improvement. So what are we going to do in future? Follow the spec. <laughs> <laughs> their big test is only a week away. They are going to be paying us to do the Great Gatsby food for their party. And when you pay, you expect best delivery. Whether that's from young staff, old staff, whatever. I'm paying, deliver. In under a week, my crack team of retired caterers hope to show us all what we're missing out on. That's really powerful. I'd buy into that. They're going back to work to provide canapes and cocktails at a Great Gatsby themed party. It's really good. And your shape is excellent. Today, ex Savoy barman Salim is busy creating the ultimate 1920s cocktail menu. He'll be serving drinks with former Claridge's waiter, Daniel, who will be maitre d' on the night. Oh, good to see you. <laughs> very well, very well. Daniel, who retired 14 years ago, worked in some of the best Soho restaurants. He worked his way up to become head waiter at the BBC's private restaurant, Bush House. You know, you don't find these anymore. Mm. This is the martini mixing glass. Both at the top of their game in the same era, they've a lot to catch up on. So tell me, who did you meet in that Savoy? I met Charlie Chaplin. I met Charlie at Simpsons. He gave me such a lovely smile, uh -huh. you know, 
and I still remember it after 43, 44 years. Salim, formerly from the Savoy, and Daniel, formerly from Claridge's, soon find that old rivalries die hard. I always mention uh, the Claridge's as number two hotel in London. No, not number <laughs> one for, in the world, not in London, in the world. Let's start making a cocktail list. Eventually, the past masters get down to work. Manhattan? Yeah. White Lady. They plan to test the new drinks menu on agency workers Maggie and Mo. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> but the boys are soon back at loggerheads over which hotel has the best view. You see the Thames, yeah. you see London Eye, Westminster. Big Ben. Yeah, but I mean, see? who wants to see the Thames sort of small tugboats steaming up and down <laughs> and greasy looking sailors? Salim finally starts the show with a finely strained gin and triple sec classic, The White Lady. Oh, that is lovely. Oh, that is delicious. You look like a champagne lover. I can't wait. Oops. Typical of the Savoy, isn't it? Put his cheap <laughs> champagne in. <laughs> Finally, drawing on all his expertise, Salim demonstrates the ultimate gentleman's cocktail, the old-fashioned. Take the sugar. Using a sugar cube, three drops of bitters and a fine slice of orange peel, it's Daniel's favourite cocktail, made the Savoy way. This can be made with bourbon, whiskey, put in a, and lots of ice. This is your old-fashioned. Thank you, sir. Verdict, well... Excellent. Excellent. Now I feel better. I feel better. It's Daniel's turn. He's determined to showcase the skills that he learned at Claridge's. A generous dash of Galliano followed by a slug of Cointreau blended with fresh orange. It's Daniel's special take on the Harvey Wallbanger. May I present you with my Gatsby special? We'll probably make history with this. It's a wonderful imitation. Oh, you couldn't resist, <laughs> could you? Daniel, it's wonderful. The drinks menu is finalised. At least that's one thing they can agree on. <laughs> With less than a week to go until the Great Gatsby party, agency office manager Jill is hosting a dress rehearsal to put the catering team through their paces. Right, so if you'd like to come through with me into the lounge, all your chef whites and things are there. She's asked them to make and serve 50 canapes from the Gatsby menu. It will be a stiff test of their catering and service skills. Well, I have every faith in you. I'm looking forward to tasting the food as well. <laughs> Can we put the... Into the Dawn, with 20 years' experience running a pub kitchen, has appointed herself head chef. Yeah, excuse me, we've forgotten. Yes, chef. All right. <laughs> I've got my hat on, though, so... <laughs> well, I suppose my problem is that if you've been in charge, you sort of take charge. Former pub landlady and head chef Dawn has an impressive pedigree. In 1978, she became one of the first women in the UK to be granted a licence to run her own public house. I loved the pub. Opening that up was, was brilliant. Dawn retired eight years ago and desperately misses her old life. She still visits her old pub to remind herself of her heyday. I think what I miss most is the camaraderie, the buzz that you get from knowing that people go to your pub because they like it. For 15 years, Dawn poured her heart and soul into the business. And the kitchen was off through that way. Dare I have a look? Whew, about 10 times the size mine was. <laughs> but one day, a call from the brewery changed everything. We got a phone call from the area manager saying, I really don't know how to tell you this, but it's going over to management. Dawn was to lose more than the pub. Because the business went, um, eventually the house went, because the ex went, and uh, so life then took on the next chapter. When you hit hard times, you cannot... You can't give up. Back in the hot seat, can Dawn still run a busy kitchen? 
folks, don't forget to taste your fillings. Aye, aye, chef. And manage a team who have not worked together before. They're looking for the prawns. We can't find the prawns. What are you looking for? Prawns. Why would they be in the fridge? Well, the prawns. Prawns, prawns. I thought you said prawns. <laughs> OK, I think we're now all doing what we need to be doing. I want to check on the progress in the kitchen before the guests arrive. I'm hoping that the presentation is absolutely brilliant and that they deliver it on time and they're able to do that with effectiveness and speed. And then the added bit is going to be their charm. Hello. Here we go. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. Grace has produced a dozen perfectly cooked crab stuffed mushrooms. Oh, Grace has done a wonderful job here, I think. And between Margarita's spiced deviled eggs... They're looking so rather stunning. ..and Dawn's walled-off salad canapes, first impressions of the kitchen are excellent. I have to say, the food looks lovely. Jill has invited her fellow agency workers to test the food at the rehearsal. Are we ready to go, folks? Yes. Yep. Thanks. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. Oh, thank you. The deviled eggs, yes. Yeah. These are good. We don't want them to. Do you want to try one? Just see how it, how it does. The canapes are looking really good, but will the service match? What's this called? Filled crab uh, stuffed mushrooms. mushrooms. Stuffed no. mushrooms. What are they called? Stuffed, stuffed mushrooms, mushrooms with crab. Stuffed mushrooms with crab. Okay. Can I see the salad? So, Waldorf. Oh, it is. But there you go, you see. That was my mistake, you see. Are you alert? That's the whole thing. His work and you can't give him food. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, you, yeah, you've got to circle it. You've got to keep going around. Would you like to do some more? Yeah. yeah. Grace is offering nice. Danny, who's working for it. Do you want an order? Jesus. The service wasn't up to scratch, and with the Gatsby party only a few days away, I'm worried we may have bitten off more than we can chew. And that sort of natural ability to ease through it just wasn't there, and that is frightening. It's a, there's a big leap to be made before we end up on that day. It's been a year since award-winning hairdresser Paul retired. That type of creativity I don't do anymore, and I do miss that. Desperate to get back to work, he contacted our agency and we found him a brand-new client, Rihanna, who today will be celebrating her 21st birthday with a Moulin Rouge-themed party. I expect my good looks and charm and wit will win her over very, very easily. Paul has been teamed up with retired makeup artist Sandra, and together they will be making over Rihanna before the party. I definitely know my own mind. I have a certain way of doing things, and if I don't like my hair, then I will say. Hello! They have been booked by Mum Sheila, who's trusting they will do her daughter proud. We've heard about this agency, and I just hope they do a good job, and I'm sure they will. But if they don't, I just dread to think what she'll be like. Do you want to wear eyelashes? If you think it will look good, well, then I, yeah. I've got, I've got some very nice eyelashes with little diamantes oh, yeah, on, nice. on the base. Sandra, who retired eight years ago, is being given another chance. And birthday girl Rihanna is about to receive the benefit of 40 years' professional knowledge crafted on big-budget films. I worked on all sorts of productions. I worked with the first three of the Doctors of Doctor Who. I did Bugsy Malone. I worked with Omar Sharif, Michael Caine, Pierce Brosnan and Christopher Lee. But like a million other Brits, Sandra gave up her career to become a carer. My husband became ill and had to be looked after. I just started doing less and less because my husband needed me more and more. Until 2010, when her husband passed away. The opportunity to work again is very important. Your skills don't disappear you've still got them there, and while ever you can keep them doing it, you've, you've got to keep doing it. The job is the perfect opportunity for Sandra to put her considerable talents back to work. I've got this really lovely dark green sparkly yeah. eyeshadow. That'll be a lovely colour on yeah. you, and it'll bring the green out in your eyes. Oh, it's brilliant. Really nice. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do now is curl up a bit of your hair. 
then lift it up yeah. and then go on from there. Finally, with a creative project to inspire him, Paul draws on all the skills which made him the award-winning hairdresser of his day. I'm going to just put another couple of pins in here. OK, darling. Yeah, that ain't coming out. And I want to see what these curl up with you holding it before we clip it in. Yes. And Sandra is working her magic too. Have a little look in the mirror. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're awesome. While family and friends wait downstairs, the time's come for the birthday girl to make her grand entrance. Sandra, I've made like the best job ever. She looks. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. It was just a fab day. It was. She was such a smashing kid. I was really happy. It really highlights to me how much I actually miss doing it. Definitely not lost it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. And I wish you luck. Thank you. And Oh, thank How you. Is the pensioners? <laughs> With their hard work rewarded, Paul and Sandra are on the road back to re-employment. 100%. I recommend anybody uh, employ them. They're fantastic. And because they've done such a good job, and Tia, my youngest, is coming up for 18, we're definitely going to get them back for that. At last, it's time for the big event. Today, the caterers are putting their skills and experience to the test for real paying customers at the great Gatsby party. As the day progresses, we'll have to work as a team. 50 guests are arriving in just three hours' time. The heat is on for Dawn and her team in the kitchen. Can that lettuce be taken away, because I don't want that? Yes, boss. Thank you, sir. Clients Becky and Natalie are hoping their faith in the caterers will pay off. I just hope they haven't taken on too much with the menu. It's a lot of stuff that has to happen on yeah. the night rather than things that they could have pre-organised. Back in the kitchen, head chef Dawn and her team get to work prepping 800 canapes, including deviled eggs and crab stuffed mushrooms. A hot barbecue service including the Gatsby burger, ribs and numerous salads. And finally, 120 champagne sorbets. I could do with a whole bottle of water myself. I just want to put my beetroot on. Oh, there's your flaked almonds. Chef Grace has started prepping the crab stuffed mushrooms when she spots a mix-up with the ingredients. These are again, not bell peppers, these are scotch bonnets. <gasps> the scotch bonnet pepper, a.k.a. the ball of fire, is over 40 times hotter than the common jalapeno. I don't think we can use them, they're so hot. It's supposed to be hot, you know, but... This is so hot. It's so hot. Yeah, I jumped, really jumped when I... <laughs> yeah, maybe it might blow them away. <laughs> Without Grace's attention to detail, the mushrooms would have been bombs waiting to go off. Grace has been amazing today. She's amazing really, Grace. really good. Amazing Grace, I love it. Uh, chef good, told yes. me we can't find the spring onions, my darling. They're here, my love. Oh. Soon the kitchen is buzzing as our chefs get stuck into work. It does get stressful because you know you've got to have everything ready for when the party's supposed to start. The ribs can't go in yet. They've got to go in just a uh, half an hour before they're going on the barbecue. My agency boss, Jill, has come up with a solution to the problems the caterers have with service. She's asked them to stay in the kitchen Everybody. While she and the agency staff take on front of house responsibilities with Daniel. At quarter to seven, we would like you guys with trade drinks ready to go. Five minutes before doors open, I'm in my glad rags, hoping my team are ready to showcase their expertise. We've had one dry run and it was pretty dysfunctional. I feel I just want to roll my sleeves up and be there to help them. But I can't. I've just got to be a guest. Outside, the guests have gathered as the front of house staff frantically fill the champagne flutes. But as my grandmother might say, less speed and more haste. Can I pass that? Oh. 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 OK. Well, that's a smashing start, isn't it? Kent may be laughing, but the client is not overly impressed. Yeah, well, I think we're a bit behind schedule. All the staff are waiting outside to come in, and we've just had a break-in. 
Are you guys okay if we start to invite people through? Yes, we're not going to rush. Yeah, we're not going to rush. Champagne. Yes, please. Have a good time. With the champagne now flowing, so is Daniel's front of house service. Now we're settling down into a rhythm, so... To me, personality is a big selling point of this catering team, so we've put our main charm offensive front and centre with Phyllis. Can I interest you in my cake? Who's dishing out her 1920s upside-down pineapple cake. It's the right here. I was born in 1921. I think it's fantastic. It's just the most wonderful experience. It might be Phyllis's first outing as a professional caterer, but there's no doubt she's an instant hit. Thank you very much. Without the cake, it would be a miserable party. <laughs> Lovely. Back in the kitchen. I'm just getting eggs ready to be hard boiled for the deviled eggs. Former deli owner Margarita puts the finishing touches to 200 handmade deviled eggs. We're getting to the final stages now. Soon I'll be decorating. That looks gorgeous. Which are swiftly circulated by the waiting staff. It, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Come on, be tempted. Be tempted. Oh. Take one for each hand. Oh, lovely job. Oh, wonderful. Now in full swing, the party moves into the main Gatsby room and Celine's bar is open for business. I hope you enjoy it. Drawing on four decades of experience, Celine's right back in his element. Where did you learn to make your cocktails? I was the head barman of the Savoy Hotel. Oh my goodness. For how many years? 43. 43 years? Been here, bring bags. Beautiful memories. I'm trying to relive these memories again. While Salim holds court, I want to see how Phyllis has found her first day back at work. Phyllis, I'm not being funny. Aren't you meant to be giving out the cake? I'm sorry, but if you give out three whole trays of cake <gasps> and it's all gone. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there with your champagne. It's not only the first one, honestly. <laughs> Dawn's now overseeing the barbecue. Start at this end, because you've already done some. Where her chefs are putting out 200 marinated ribs and Gatsby mini burgers. But by the time they've been served to the guests, there's a problem. The burgers are like freezing cold. How They're that really be? cold. I don't know. It doesn't take Jill long to figure out how to get the service moving a bit faster. Up you go, girl. Jill's low down. They can't quite get up the steps with the tray. So Jill holds the tray while they get up the steps. See, you don't think of those things. I didn't think about the knees and the hips. With the final hurdle overcome, all the food is served and our cooks can breathe a sigh of relief. They fall into two categories, I always think. There's drains and radiators. And I've just got these fabulous old vintage radiators that are just giving off an incredible energy. And everybody wants that energy. And it's just a magical formula that I kind of feel proud to be witnessing. I'm proud of my team, but what did the client think? We knew that we were taking a little bit of a risk tonight, and actually they have exceeded our expectations and I just want them back. <laughs> it's the start of something, I genuinely believe, but it's, it's the start of something for them feeling needed and wanted and purposeful, and that, that's above all anything, even if it's one gig every two months. It wasn't just about the brilliant food. It wasn't just about the brilliant service. It was what you brought to it as well, which was just unique. I'm extraordinarily proud. You made everybody feel good, so I thank you all. Thank you. It was 
the, one of the best evenings I've ever had. The last two weeks have been an extraordinary journey for my caterers. I was glad I came and I'm very proud of what I've achieved here. Dawn missed the thrill of running her own pub, but this has shown her that she's still got what it takes to make great things happen. Hearing the praise that we got given was great. Yeah, I think it made us all feel quite good in ourselves. And Salim has rediscovered the buzz that made his working life so happy. Tonight was like, I forgot that I retired. Mm. That's beautiful. Yep. When I started the agency, I really hoped that the jobs we got in would give the retirees confidence back in themselves and be the start of more work to come. And I'm happy to say, I think it's done the trick. Next time, cocktail connoisseur Salim's new career takes off. They open a new horizon for Salim. An 82-year-old fitness instructor visits the agency. Ooh. Does that mean you're still into bed exercise? I love it. <laughs> and my newest recruits... Go and pick your tools and let's get going. ..prove that they've got what it takes... I suggest Agent Orange on the grass. ..to pull off an ambitious garden makeover. These are the best days of my life.